Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Predators Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And it's, uh, it's great to be back with you. I had a great, great weekend in Memphis, Tennessee at the uh, conference there. I was honored to speak at, at William Bell's conference. Had some new men, so to speak, there. And great, great to hear them speak. They gave some wonderful lessons. Met a lot of new people. You know, it's just amazing uh, at the, the growth the, and the enthusiasm, the excitement that is in the preterist community over the growth that is taking place, over what they're uh, discovering in their studies, and as they're sharing with person after person after person. And it's just, uh, it's just really, really wonderful. You'll want to contact William Bell about how to get a hold of the DVDs and the MP3s of that conference. It was very, very good. Okay, well, we are closing in on the close of our study an examination of Dr. David Hester's 23 affirmative arguments that he offered in our formal public debate July 14th and 15th here in Ardmore, 2016. The very last text that Dr. Hester appealed to was John chapter 11, 25 and 26, where, of course, Lazarus had died. Jesus delayed his going and traveling to Bethany where Lazarus had lived. And while he was there, you know, Mary and Martha confronted him. Martha said, Lord, why, you know, basically, why did you wait so long? And Jesus posed the question to Martha because she, she affirmed that she believed that he would rise again. And Jesus said, well, you know, I am the resurrection and the life. Now watch. This passage gives no support whatsoever to the doctrine of a physical resurrection. We have already examined the fact that Dr. Hester's appeal to the last day backfires on him, but now watch this. Jesus continued by saying to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Now look, folks, there is simply not one word in the text about raising physical bodies out of the grave. That has to be read into the text. And that violates what we have studied on the term the last day. The last day is the last day of the 1290 and the 1335 days of Daniel chapter 12 and the resurrection of Daniel chapter 12 at the end of the age at the end of the 1,335 days would be when the power of the holy people was completely shattered. So we have a definitive context from which John 11 is drawn, upon which John 11 is based. But then notice what Jesus says. I am the resurrection and the life. If a man believe in me, yet shall he live. Here is an affirmation, not of being raised up out of physical holes in the ground, but of life after death. It's that powerful. Now watch this. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Now Dr. Hester closed his lesson by saying, do you believe this? Well, the question is, to Dr. Hester, do you believe this? Jesus said, the one who believe, lives and the one who believes in me shall never die. So, the question to Dr. Hester is, do you believe in Jesus? Of course, he does. But he's going to die. He's going to die physically. Dr. Hester knows very well he cannot be talking about physical death here because every person, even the most faithful Christian who has ever lived in the entirety of the Christian age, every single Christian has died physically. 
That cannot be talking about dying physically or not dying physically. And thus, Dr. Hester's emphasis on physical life, physical death in this text, comes back to bite him. And by the way, it raises a tremendous question. Why does the Christian have to die physically? We'll talk about that in our next installment because I want to tell you something. That question is a fatal question for Dr. David Hester. It cannot be answered without destroying his eschatology and his theology. So we'll see you on the flip side. In the meantime, if you want more on John 11, 25 to 27, get a copy of my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings, in which I discuss and in which I exegete John chapter 11, and I demonstrate the difficulty for the traditional views of, of resurrection from this great text. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, or eschatology.org, order the book, send me a note saying that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. All right? Well, look forward to next section in which we are going to ask the question, why does the most faithful child of God have to die physically when Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will never die? Apples and oranges? Well, we'll see you on the flip side.